Shalom Chavarim. Rastafari Shalom. So here for this 17th sabbatical study here for this Shabbat Strong, we have Yotor. Yotor, right? Yotor, that's in the Royal Amharic, or Yitro, Yitro. In the English, it's translated as Jethro. Jethro. So Jethro, here we have Moses' father-in-law, sometimes referred to as a Medeanite, right? He's a priest of Median. He's a Hebrew. Let's clarify this. Some of the latter-day Jews, other Yehudi, right? Some of the European and other Jews try to call him a pagan priest. They say he's a pagan. Try to use that terminology. Now, pagan is not a terminology that appears in the Bible. We did a whole vid to try to clarify, you know, that particular matter because it's a kind of a cognitive dissonance even in the use thereof. Pagan, pagan, mean one who lives in the countryside, and urban means one who lives in the city. So that means you can have a faithful Torah observant righteous person who lives in the countryside, Pagan, or you can have a righteous person who lives in the city, the urban. It has nothing to do with the biblical terminology of Gentile or of Goyim from the Hebrew or of um, nations. Nations is a little more of the, the social political you know, of that biblical terminology. Understand the truth of the Bible, even in these latter day times of the Gentiles. But here, 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 subject matter right here. <laughs> That's not the subject matter, but just kind of just to remind ones and ones on it. Because when we heard that someone was saying that Jethro was a, um, you know, a pagan priest, a pagan, but he's the first one to bless Jehovah out of 600,000 B'nai Yisrael, sons of Israel, male, male Israelites. See, the term B'nai Yisrael, B'nai, B'nai, actually in the Hebrew means sons of. Literally, directly, it means sons of, but often it can be and has been brought out like in the KJV translation as children of Israel. See, this is all leading to the point right here and asking this question. This is one of the reasons that hopefully after the Shabbat, the podcast, you know, if you get through the Aliyo, you know, the Torah reading, Haftarah, the Brit Chadash, a new covenant reading, get into a reasonment on this right here, 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 but definitely for the Talmudim, the Rastafari Talmudim, for the disciples, Talmudim, the Hebrew for disciples, for those who are in the true um, Talmud, which is a true teaching. It's an operative word, brothers and sisters. Don't get it twisted. Look it up. Study. Right? Get to know the truth for yourself. But here, here, here. Subject matter right here is what's, the ten, what's called the Ten Commandments. Now, we know, the, we know the Ten Commandments scripturally, biblically as the Esaret HaDibarim. Esaret HaDibarim. And the Esaret HaDibarim, what does it mean, Chabarim? The Esaret HaDibarim, Esaret means the ten Debarim. Debarim. Some of the modern Jews and the modern enunciation of Hebrew, they'll say Esaret Devar. Well, they say Devrot, right? That's a kind of modern way in Judaism. But scripturally, Torah-wise, being Torah observant, in the Torah is the Esaret HaDibarim. In other words, the ten Right, the Esra Debarim, the ten words. Debarim mean the ten words. So what's called the Ten Commandments correctly is the ten words. Correctly, the Ten Commandments are one commandment. The Ten Commandments are one commandment. Hebraically, we say truly Judaically, we refer to the Ten Commandments, right? The Ten Commandments as the Ten Words. Esaret. Hadibarim or the Esaret de Barim, the ten words. So the question here for this 17th Rastafari sabbatical here, we're in Shabbat, Shabbat, Yitro, Ethiopically, Senbet, Senbet, Yotor, or simply speaking, Sabbath, Jethro, the 17th sabbatical study here for this Shabbat strong, Jethro. And in this Torah reading and feeding, we have the ten, the ten words that is often referred to as the Ten Commandments. And there's a lot of controversy around the whole thing. Where did Moses get it from? Did he get it from Egypt? Some people be naive that, and we can address all of that with facts, with exhibits, with evidence, you know, so-called receipts, as well as a couple of invoices, you know, included in those receipts right there. But the point here is, was the Ten Words, called the Ten Commandments, were they given to men only, for men only. I just thought about that right there. You know how they used to have that 
they still have that business out there, right? For men only or something like that. Were the ten, the ten Commandments for men only? Who were they given to? So here we're trying to work out a little bit of what we put in the title of this particular vlog and this particular vid right here. You know, but just going through some of the basic reasonings here, just to bring forward the basic reasoning. What's the reasoning here? The question, so based on this question, was the Ten Commandments or were the Ten Commandments, or we can even say are in the present tense sense, but let's first look in the context as it was originally given. Were the Ten Commandments, were they given to men, right, or the males of Yisrael only? Right. So the question could be, who were the Ten Commandments given to? We'll say the children of Israel, speak to the children of Israel. But when we say the children of Israel, in the Hebrew, the term children of Israel is B'nai, B'nai, right? Somebody enunciated it differently, B'nai Yisrael, B'nai Yisrael. So here we'd like to look at what's known as the Ten, right? Right here, 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 the Ten Words, also known as the Ten Commandments asking the question who was the ten commandments given to answer children of israel yes more specifically the sons the sons the b'nai b'nai from ben right b'nai b'nai yisrael b'nai yisrael was given to the sons of yisrael now how do we know this well, we know this as we get into the hebrew studies of the Torah, right? And the Hebrew studies here in the second book of Moshe, the Hebrew book that's known as Shemot. So Hebraically, Exodus, Yetziat, right? Mitzrayim, like the Exodus, Yetziat, that's how we refer to it, Yetziat, this is how it gets its, its um, the coin of Greek name, Exodus, and then it comes down to us as Exodus, right? But actually, from a Hebrew, prior to the coin of Greek, you know, because it's a Septuagint, Right, Copto coin of Greek Septuagint is referred to and still referred to as Shemot, and Shemot means the names, the names, the names, the names, the Shems, the Shems. So, why did Hashem, why did the name, right, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Yahweh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, why did Jehovah give the Ten Commandments? to the males of Yisrael. Why is it directed in the Hebrew, in the language, as we study the language, right? Who is speaking, right? And who is being spoken to? And so in answering who is speaking is Hashem, is Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem. He who be, who he be, Eloheinu. It's our power, our Hebrew God power is speaking to who? The B'nai Yisrael. He's speaking to the sons of Israel. Then we look at the language, and the language is directed to a male singular. So the singularity right here is directed to the male singular. From the very first, we can say word. Remember, it's ten words. Esaret de barim is the ten words. From the very first word to the tenth word of the commandment. So a couple of reorientation points are necessary to really understand, just an understanding, because then you have to meditate on this understanding, the true, the true and the new understanding to come to the overstanding. So first point right here is that the 10 words or the 10 commandments are properly according to the Torah, according to the scripture. We're not deep ending on the translation. Many of us have had to deep end, right? We had a deep end. And I'm going to say deep end. We were in the deep end, you know, depending. We had to depend on the translator. And still we make, you know, reference to the translation. It's a, it's a start point. And for I and I, discipleship, you know, Rastafari disciples, Rastafari disciples, we I and I, we use the Schofield Study Bible as an English point of reference. So an English point of reference right there. And it's a very good, I can say, stepping stone to, to the, the HD, like the Hebrew definition from the very beginning, bringing out even Elohim and some of the names in the transliteration helps us to see it from the, the Hebrew, you could say the Hebrew perspective. In other words, how did the Hebrews... And when I say Hebrews, I'm not just talking about flesh, I'm talking about the spirituality, right, of the true, we could say, descendants, right, of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, of the Hebrew Trinity, all right? 
So here, 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 who was the 10 words spoken to? The 10 words were spoken to only the males of Israel, right? For men only? That's the question we're asking. Were the 10 commandments being spoken to the men or the males of Israel? And there's a few points, even within the 10 commandments. First of all, just looking at the narrative it explains the point. So many of us have gotten like a faulty view, right, of what we should know is truly true, really true. Now, I know this might be shocking to some to say, well, are you saying that the woman, woman don't have to keep the Ten Commandments? No, what we are saying right here, right, what we're saying right here is that when the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words, rather, correctly, the Ten Words, Ten Words is one commandment. That's the first thing we have to understand, the context of what we're talking about. We often refer to it as the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments. And that's because of some rather poor translations. Even in the one or maybe two places in the KJV and other Bibles where it might say in the translation, Ten Commandments, if you do due diligence and you look at the, the, the Hebrew, the Masoretic, what they allegedly translated from, it does not say Ten Commandments in the original. So that's a point that most Yehudi, most Jews and Yehudi understand this. <laughs> That's why sometimes the Yehudi and the Jews don't argue about some things because some things are really silly and stupid. It really shows that you haven't done the basic work. You're criticizing the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Old Testament, and you haven't even done the basic work, right, of comprehending the linguistics and the language. All you're talking about is what 1611 translation, the so-called King James Version translation, right? And then when somebody's showing you the Hebrew, you act as though the Hebrew don't matter. I'm not talking to my, my brothers, but I'm saying to those, you know, these and those. These and those be like that. So here, 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 the Ten Commandments, we're going to state this on the record right here because some of these other guys, these other camps, they can't really, you know, be ten toes down on this, <laughs> on these ten words right here, right? And state that because the majority of them are still stuck on the English only. They're the English only. So from the English only, you might not be able to perceive or, or see my, who was being spoken to. You're not able to see that in the English so, cl so clearly or so easily. But when you start to look in the text, notice some things about the, the text where it talks about um, he will visit the iniquity, right? of the fathers. You notice that right there? It doesn't say the fathers and mothers. Just just a kind of a point right here. When he says that he will visit the iniquity, right, of the fathers. <laughs> it doesn't say of the fathers and the mothers. Right? Upon the children to the third and fourth generation, those who hate him. Now, see that's the trans more or less a translation right there. Right? Now the part about the fathers they brought out. Now in some versions or perversions, they probably will retranslate that, or mistranslate that as um, visit the iniquity of the parents. They probably say parents, but no, literally, directly it says fathers. Why? There's a biblical principle you hear some church folks saying sometimes, to whom more is given, more is required. Right? To whom more is given, more is required. So we talk about things like the mind, you know, it's with the black man being the man and manning up and taking responsibility. Well, if it, it wasn't in the beginning. No wonder it's so difficult now in the so-called end time, in these end times of the Gentiles. Because in the beginning, we can see how difficult it was. And see, this is giving a true perspective, right, of the ups and downs, mixed up moves and attitudes, follies and undercrowns of the B'nai, of the sons, the sons of Israel. Now, this does not say that, well, there was no woman, you know, all the women were, were right and perfect and none of them were doing wrong things or bad things. Well, no, no, we're not saying that. That's not the point right here. Even the scripture addresses that. But everything precept upon precept, line upon line, everything in his, his good order. Here, a little there, a little. First, we have to go right here because this is the Torah reading and feeding within the 17th sabbatical study, right, for Shabbat Yitro, Sabbath Jethro. And it's here where we have... Moshe's um, Chotino, Chotino, his, his, his father-in-law. His father-in-law, now he has heard all that Hashem, Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Jehovah, HaKadosh, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name that Hashem has done for the B'nai Yisrael, for the sons 
of Yisrael in bringing forth right, the children of Israel out of Mitzrayim, out of Mizraim. Now he heard this, he didn't see it. What does the Bible say? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? The Debre Elohim, by the word of the true good, the true God, right? The Elohim, right? The Hebrew, the true Hebrew God powers. Yes? Yes. So that even proves even right there from an English perspective, when you look at the 10 words or the 10 commandments, as you call them in Exodus chapter 20. Right? In Exodus chapter 20, you'll see where he says, he will visit the iniquity of the fathers. Now, some people read it and try to do this kind of nowadays, latter days, pseudo, pseudo equality thing, <laughs> you know, and say, uh, you know, this is iniquity upon the fathers and the mothers, or they'll be even put the woman first, they'll say the mothers and the fathers, they do this perversion, all this screwy stuff. If we just understand how it was intended from the very beginning, we will find that it's not necessary for us to insert our latter day mixed up moods, ideas, confusions of this latter day Gentile society on the ancient scripts. When we understand how it was intended from the very beginning, right? This is why we use this as an object lesson right here concerning the 10 words, aka the 10 commandments. That the 10 words, the 10 commandments, Right, are directly given and speaking to the men, the sons of Yisrael. And one of the reasons he says he'll visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the sons. It's not children there in the sense of like boy children and girl children. No, it's specifically upon the sons of Yisrael. So the fathers, see, the fathers had a responsibility, not just to the sons, right, but to the whole family. The men, we talk about man up. Right here for the Israelites is here we could call this section of the narrative just post Exodus as the man up with the giving of the 10 words called the 10 commandments is man up. Right. But what the sons of Israel, right, even as the lost found black and brown even show today and nowadays in these latter days, it's almost like man down, man down, right, man down, not man up. Right, man down because so quickly after they had come into covenant, right, with Hashem, we see where they broke the covenant and the covenant had to be renewed. So even here, we find as we're moving forward here in the second book of Moshe called Exodus, we'll find there's a renewing of the covenant, which even in the Old Testament, there's a New Testament. That's another related point because some Old Testament only Hebrews and Israelites talk about, oh, woo, 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 the New Testament, this, the Brit Kadasha, that. But then note this right here that there was already a new covenant in the Old Covenant. Even when the covenant first, right, was entered into, there was a breaking of that covenant with the molten calf. Remember the molten calf incident? Oh, y'all call it the golden calf. There's no such thing as a golden calf in the Bible. Yes, gold was used, but it's clear in the scripture. And even in the translation, it's accurate where it says molten calf. But somehow people have been made to be naive that it's a golden calf. It's like the old saying was that one fool makes many. See, and that's the way it is in this fallen world. John's intention was that hopefully one righteous can make many righteous. One wise can make many wise. Just as in this fallen world, world flesh and satanic system, one fool, like a lot of fools have made many, you know, saying golden calf, golden calf. People read in the Bible and they don't even read that. Well, there's, in the text, there's no golden calf. Right. People saying, oh, black man is cursed because he's Hamite. He's a Hamite. Ham, ham, ham. Right. And then we read in the Bible, there's no curse of Ham. There's the curse of Canaan. Then we get to find out that, that actually the Canaanites has to do with the Indo-European people. So it's like mm, projection. That's what they call it in psychology. Right. There's projection. You're the one doing, but you're projecting it onto others. This is what happened with the whole curse of Ham. But actually Canaan was cursed. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is as many key areas that you hear people arguing on using certain language and yet that language is not even there in what they're arguing that they're not paying attention and they're not reading with comprehension and paying attention to what they're reading it's like right here with the whole ten commandments thing so there are some things that have come out from christianity 
right, from, from white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity, things that they have said over and over and over and over again. So now we get into this and we begin to, you know, regurgitate what they said, right? If we don't study, that's if, 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 right? Just because, 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 if you don't study, but if you study to show yourself approved, then you and me, I and I do well. So here, 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 question. Why was the Ten Commandments, a.k.a. the Ten Words, all right? Because it's going to take us a while to wean off of, you know, as his master say, a bad habit, a habit once formed, become like an incurable second nature, the only thing to do for bad habits to replace it with a good habit. So we're going to have to, I got to catch myself sometime. I'm intending to say the Ten Words because that's what it truly is. It's not the Ten Commandments. We've gone through this study. We can prove that that's not what they should have been called, but this is how, how tradition and counterfeit Christianity has made us believe. And even people, there's many people who know and read the Hebrew and know that what we're saying is correct, but they continue, <laughs> like knowing what they know, they continue to do what they do. Hopefully, right, we will do better, better for I and I. Yes, I, or I, the far I. So why were the 10 words, a.k.a. the 10 commandments given to the men of Israel only? We could say were they, but we already know that they were. But for men only, the 10 commandments. Then the question is, if this is so, what about the woman? But before we go into the part of the additional reasoning of what about the woman, let us just get like 10 toes down, so to speak. Let's get on firm, solid, you know, rock bottom ground on this right here. Exodus chapter 10. No, Exodus chapter 20. <laughs> Exodus chapter 20. Oh, so much 10, 10, 10. Right? Exodus chapter 20. The 10, what's called the 10 commandments are actually 10 words are actually one commandment. We can prove that too scripturally, that what you call the 10 commandments is one commandment, is one commandment, which has 10 words, literally in the Hebrew, debarim, devarim, debarim is words. Debar, devar, debar is word, singular, debarim is words, eseret is 10. So we have the 10 words. So the 10 words are like 10 articles. You know, like an article, like agreement, you have a, like some type of agreement and it has different articles there, right? But each of the article goes along with the next article. Like James, Jacob in the New Testament says, he says that if you break one, you break all because it's all one. That's why he, he emphasizes. So that shows that the true view of the 10 words, right, was as one commandment, one commandment. So the 10 words were given to the sons of Yisrael. How do we know that? Well, let's follow up and get into a little more of the Hebrew of it. We'll find that the, 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 the possessive pronoun, the pronoun and possessive pronoun, the Hebrew pronoun and possessive pronoun throughout the 10 words call the Ten Commandments are being directed to an individual or a singular male. A singular male. So, for example, what is it like? Let's give an example. of. So, an example, an example of what it'd be like, right? What it'd be like here, 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 we have this, and this is based on the translation from the Royal Amharic, from that pure language that he would turn to his people from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. He says, my advice the King Messiah, the King of Kings, the Black Messiah says, my advice to all is to fulfill the Ten Commandments, the Ten Words. To do what? To fulfill, fulfill, right? Of all the words that Kedemawi Hala Selassie, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, could, you know, could give, answer that he can give. What was his advice to young people? He was asked concerning young people. And he says his advice to all young and old to all is to fulfill by right, the 10 words aka the 10 commandments so an example of what it be like what it be like is you're speaking to a group of mine right a group of men but to each man man you are saying you singular see this is something that we don't have in english some other languages even european languages do have a different pronoun right for you male and you female in English, in this Babylonian, this Gentile, this end times, the end of the times, the Gentiles language, right? English, this Frankenstein, 
we call English as a Frankenstein, like the monster Frankenstein, a bunch of parts here and there and everything and composite. Well, that's what English is like. In this English language, we don't have a pronoun, right? We don't have a pronoun for, for you male and you female. But in many other languages, Romance, Latin, Romance languages, also we have languages like, um, you know, also we have languages like the Afro-Semitic languages, talking about the Hebrew and other Afro-Semitic languages. There is a difference, right? There's a key word difference between you, male, and you, female. For example, in the Hebrew and we say ante, well, we say, we, we say that, that's in Hark right there, ante, that's more like Aramaic, that's more like speaking Eastern Semitic, speaking the Hebrew, the Biblical Hebrew, Western Semitic, we say ata, ata, we say ata, 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 ata is you male, and we have at, at, right, at is you female. In Amharic, we have ante, 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 if I say ante, Antene, Antene, you male are, right? If I say Enante, right? Enante, Enante is like to say like you all, right? So there is ways of saying you male, right? Directly and you men, right? For example, when it says Yahweh, Jehovah, right? The Lord your, thy God, you know the phrase in the English, Lord thy God. When we see here, we have Instead of Lord thy God, in the Hebrew we have Yahweh Eloheka, Eloheka. Ever said Eloheik, 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 right? Or Eloheik, Eloheik, right? Eloheik is you female, your female power, your female God, or to say to man Eloheka, Eloheka. So usually in many places in the Torah, when Jehovah is speaking to all of the sons, when it says, speak to the B'nai, B'nai Yisrael, speak to the sons of Israel, often is translated as um, children of Israel, not specifically as sons of Israel. Then the second proof that is speaking about the sons distinct from the sons and daughters or the daughters, it, we have the... Um, uh, possessive, what do you call it? Possessive um, um, pro, pronoun, possessive subject. Um, what, what do you call it? The pronoun, the pronoun, possessive, su the possessive pronoun. There we go. Sorry. Possessive pronoun, the possessive pronoun. Because we've been on this a little bit long right here, but just to further clarify this for those who are willing and, and listening for the truth right here, when it says, Jehovah thy God, thy, thy could be thy male thy female, right? Thy God, right? Now, thy, T-H-Y in the English, right? Like thee, we have thee, but thee could be thee he or it could be thee she. What we find in, in the 10 words called the 10 commandments is speaking to thee, right? Thee he, thee you, male. So here a group of men are being spoken to as one man. Now, in corporate law, since we're speaking about Torah, we're speaking about law, right? So we have a thing, what we call in corporate law. You know what corporate law is, right? In corporate law, right, an individual can be considered to be a corporation, right? Or individuals, right? Individuals are corporation and corporation is viewed as one man. So in corporate law, the individuals, so those who are the individuals who are part of the business, you know, board of directors, the members or whatnot like that, they are like the parts of the body. And this is why in the New Testament, we get the perfect analogy of Moshiach, of Messiah being the Rosh, being the Ras, being the head, the Rosh in the Hebrew, the Rosh, which is Ras, the head, right? And we being the church, right? Or the Kehillah. Kehillah is the Hebrew word, the assembly, the Kehillah. And we are members and we are members of the body. So here is speaking to all the members of the body, namely all the B'nai Yisrael, all the sons, as, get this, as one man. All the sons as one man. 
So speaking of all the sons as one man. And this is what the, the Asartu Kalat, even what is called the Asartu Kalat. In Amharic, the Ten Commandments are known in His Majesty's Bible, known as the Asartun Kalat. Asartun bears a lot similarity with Esaret. Esaret, Asartun, Asar, Asartun, Esaret. Then we have Hadibarim in the Hebrew, the words. Then we have Kalat, Kalat in Amharic, which means words. Kind of related, even in the Afro-Semitic sense, to Kol, Kol. We're talking about the Kol of Yahuwah, of Jehovah. The Kol, right? Some might say Kawal, but really it's Kol. The Kol, the Kol is the voice. So the voice, the word, the word, sound, power. So a group of males are being spoken to each one is being spoken to individually it's almost as if i said remember an example ante ante right ante in them hark is saying you male like saying you you like when i speak to a brother i'm saying you i'll say ante if i speak to a woman in them hark i say you i'll say anchi in the hebrew if i'm speaking to a man i will say ata i will say ata 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 if I speak to a woman, I'll say at. See, that's the pronoun right there. And then we have the, the possessive pronoun suffix, right? Well, I was struggling with a couple of moments ago to recall. Possessive pronoun, right? The possessive, possessive pronoun, the suffix, right? So we have Elohim, we have Elohe, and then we have Eloheka, and then we have Eloheik, Eloheik. So it's clear right here now, if the Torah and when the Torah is speaking to both men and women and all Israel, all Israel, men and women, it usually use Elohe Kem, right, to say you all, right, you all. But then there's also a form of it in the Hebrew where I can say to you all as male or you all as like a group of men or a group of women. So this is the linguistic point and this element that is very important to seeing the true view of what is called and referred to as the Ten Words, a.k.a. the Ten Commandments right here. So once again to the question, was the Ten Commandments given to the men, men only of Yisrael? Based on the Hebrew, it appears and the evidence of the Hebrew, it appears so. So now we got a reason on what is the implication of this? If this is so, this should be able to be proven further elsewhere in the scripture. Right? So ones might say, I'm making an assertion right here. And yes, I, Ras, I Adonis Tafar Yadin, right? Yadin, my Hebrew name, Yadin, is making an assertion here. Now, here's what we have to prove. Is this assertion that we are making here, right, is it a true assertion? We say it is. We already gave certain proof to prove that it is. Right here, it's a true assertion, right? It's a true point. And this point has fallen between the cracks of, of, of especially the Western whitewashed Gentile Christian world. Most of the Yehudi and Jews, Torah observing Jews, understand that what we're saying here is correct. Now, they might reason that, well, even though speaking to the man is for everybody, we're not saying that these, this word is not for everybody, but, but it's addressing the men as being responsible with the upkeeping and the maintenance in the community of law and order.